Hey guys, I have here an EG4 6000 XP inverter. I purchased two of these inverters from Current Connected several months ago. This is the inverter I've selected to replace my MPP Solar LV6548 inverters that are uh, not, not functioning correctly. I've had these laid out on the floor for a couple of months now with a new wireway and some new conduit uh, boxes, some pull boxes, some new bus bars, just trying to make sure I have every last piece ready to go for installation, every lug and correct lug size that I need in every piece of wire. And I think I'm finally to that point where I'm ready to install them. I have tomorrow planned out as the day to shut down and remove my old system and hopefully get this one up and running. I have about a day or two where I can make this change and anything longer than that with lack of off-grid power starts to affect some of my systems that rely on off-grid power only. So before I get these inverters installed, uh, I wanted to take a minute just to open one of them up and show you what's inside and see what's inside for myself because I haven't quite looked yet. So that's what this video will be. We'll look at some of the specifications of this inverter and then we'll just open it up and see what's inside. We're not going to do a full review or power it on or anything like that. I wanted to get this done before it's installed because once it's installed, it becomes difficult to open and actually show what's inside. So as the name suggests, this is a 6,000 watt continuous output inverter. It's a 120, 240 uh, split phase inverter. So the output is 6,000 watts at 240 volts or 25 amps, which is 3,000 watts per 120 volt leg. I have two of these, which I'll be wiring together in parallel. So I'll have a maximum output of 12,000 watts or 50 amps at 240 volts. This inverter is certified by ETL to UL 1741 standards, which is great to see. The MPP Solar was not, it was UL 1741 compliant. So as before with many of my projects, I'll be using this inverter in a completely off-grid capacity. I won't have an AC input connected. I won't have a generator input connected. Um, just the output going to a secondary panel and I'll have solar panels connected. It has two 4,000 watt MPPT solar charge controllers, and that will allow for a maximum open circuit voltage of 480 and a maximum MPPT working voltage of 385. So it's a big step up in the right direction from the LV6548s. The working input current is 17 amps, and they allow you to oversubscribe or overload that up to 25 amps. So when you're looking at your solar panels, that will be the ISC or the short circuit current rating cannot exceed 25 amps. And I should state right there, as always, I'm not an electrician. Uh, so if you're installing one of these, you should consult electrician to make sure it's designed and sized correctly. This inverter is slightly larger in all directions than the LV6548. So it will take up a bit more space, but overall it's a very similar uh, form factor and size profile. So let's take a closer look at what the unit has to offer. So one of the many things that makes this inverter much more appealing over the LV6548 is it has all of the essential breakers and disconnects you'll need in this one enclosure and some bus bars. Whereas the LV6548, we had to build a battery box and then build an AC box. And I never did figure out the solar disconnect. The bus bars were separate. On the left side here, we have a 200 amp DC circuit breaker. And then we have a 50 amp breaker for the AC output, a 50 amp for the grid input, and a 50 amp for the generator input. These terminals on the right here will be where we connect the PV solar panels. And then we have a PV disconnect and isolator switch. Taking a look at the side of this breaker, we can see it's rated for 200 amps with a maximum voltage of 80 volts. Trip amps is 270, and the interrupt current is 10,000 amps. It does say special purpose, not for general use, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you can't really see it in there, but it is bolted down to the circuit board, so you can't actually remove that without removing that entire board that this is mounted to. And then our battery comes off and goes inside the unit. Uh, this is fairly thick cabling. It might be number four if I had to guess. Uh, is it labeled there? Oh, it is. Uh, it's number two gauge, and it might be it might be MTW. I'm not sure. It's 105 degrees Celsius insulation rating. The AC breakers are Chint NB1-63. And then we have our grounding bus bar and we have our neutral bus bar and you can see the output neutral comes down from the top there. On the right hand side we have our PV isolator disconnect switch. We have our power on off switch for the inverter. On the left side we have an on off switch for the EPS output, that's the inverter output. Um, and then we have our Wi-Fi dongle there for configuration, also has Bluetooth support. And just a quick look there at the specifications label. On the left here, we have a series of RJ45 connectors that serve our BMS communications and communications between paralleled inverters. We have a couple of dip switches there, which I believe are used to set the inverter addressing. I haven't quite looked at 
uh, the exact configuration of that just yet. We have some contacts for a dry contact relay, a generator start, and a 12 volt output it looks like there. All of the wiring here appears to be number 10. It is 105 degrees Celsius insulation rating. And in some cases, such as our AC input there, we have a pair of number 10s. Everything else appears to be single conductors for the AC output, generator input, and the solar PV connections. This does come with some knockouts ready to go down here. Um, I don't like the location of the provided knockouts and I don't like the size of them. They don't quite fit US fittings. Uh, it almost seems like they may be metric sized holes. Um, so I ended up not using them and you can see I've got some of my own punched and ready to go here. Oh, there's a cable getting pulled to the display under there. Let's see if we can get that out without breaking it here. Okay. So we'll start with this board first, which I believe is the MPPT charge controller. Uh, so we can see the two positives and one negative come in up here. They're labeled PV1 and PV2. They're going down to that circuit board down there. There's a capacitor on each. Each one has a pair of positive and negative going to these inductors over here, which I believe are for the current limiting. We've got our transistors here and I see each one has a heat sensor on the heatsink, which is great to see. We then have the uh, positive and negative that come out of the charge controller and I see bus plus and bus minus. So that'll be our high voltage DC bus current. Uh, that's coming off and going down to the inverter board down there. One other thing I like is the way they have the three fans on the left hand side there. We have plastic shrouds to direct the air over specific components. And then we have the inductors which are going to heat up at the right side of the enclosure where the air is blowing out and then exhausted out the side. Uh, and there are a total of one, two, three, four, five inductors on the right hand side here. Moving up to the top here, I believe this to be the control board for the main unit. We have one lead going down to the uh, inverter board and then we have a larger lead coming up the front here, going to all of our communications ports and our power switches. Our battery leads come off this uh, circuit breaker input board here and they're going along the left side of the inverter. Up to the top left corner where both the positive and negative enter the circuit board with two large bus bars. We have two primary heat sinks, one here and one here. As we typically see on these inverters, each side's going to be lined with a series of FET transistors. And then between them, there's a series of large capacitors down in there. And by the way, there is supposed to be a programmable uh, ground neutral bonding relay in here, either open or closed. Uh, I'm gonna leave mine open because I have a ground neutral bond in the electrical panel. So on the left-hand side here, we have our uh, leg one, our leg two, and then the blue is our neutral output coming out of the inverter. There are two more inductors. Uh, there seems to be a lot of inductors in this inverter, so I'll take that as a positive sign. Um, while looking over this, I did notice that most of the connectors are glued down into place, which is great to see. Uh, most, almost all of the screws, pretty much all of them really, have uh, torque marks on here. You can see they're all with the black dot, which indicates that uh, somebody has either checked or torqued these down to specifications. All of the conductors have a dot on them as well. They've been checked. Batteries, again, they all have marks on them indicating that somebody has checked all of those connections. Pretty much everywhere you look, everything is marked. That is great to see that somebody has taken the time to go over this and ensure everything is up to quality standards. Everything in there looks great as far as I can tell. I am very excited to get these into service and get those old MPP solars out of there. Uh, they've been limping along for far too long. Um, and I've been waiting far too long to get this job done. So I would have liked to see more of the lower board that's in there, but I didn't want to start pulling out those circuit boards and all those connections and those wires, risking not putting them back correctly or routing the cables the same way. Unless there is some unforeseen circumstance, I'll have these up and running tomorrow, uh, and then I'll be back early next week with a follow-up video just telling you how they're doing and showing you the final setup. Uh, so any questions or comments, leave those down below. Anything you guys want to see, let me know. Um, hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.